Priscilla Hauser, spokesperson for Plaid, who makes wonderful folk art paint. And I have so many exciting things to tell you. You know, I've been teaching decorative painting for 35 years, but I've never had the joy of helping develop a paint. And for the first time in my life, I had. And it's developed for us, for all of us who paint in any way. And this new paint is called Folk Art Artist's Pigment. You're going to love it because it's going to blend and move and cover like no paint in acrylic you have ever used before. In addition, we have some exciting new mediums. Do you know what a medium is? It's simply a product that you use with your paint to get the result that you want. Sort of like adding chocolate to icing to make chocolate icing. Well, the first thing that I want to show you is how easy it is to use a product that's called neutral glaze. Now, neutral glaze means that it's a glaze that has no color in it. So we can antique with it, we can stain with it, and we can create faux finishes with it. Just watch how easy. I'm going to take the neutral glaze, and it will appear to be white in color, and I'm going to squeeze a blob of it here on my utility or wax-coated palette. Now then, first of all, if I want to stain with it, I'll take the object that I'm going to stain or color the wood and sand. Then, using a tack rag, we'll wipe all of the sawdust away. Now, you can add any of the folk art colors you want to to the glaze. I'm going to take a little bit of the wonderful new Artist Pigment Burnt Umber and Asphaltum. Asphaltum is a gorgeous, rich, golden brown. And just mix the colors into the neutral glaze and begin to brush it on to create a stain. Look how beautifully it stains the wood and how easily it flows on to the surface. Then you just take your cheesecloth, your rag, whatever you have that you want to wipe with and wipe the desired amount off. Here is one that I have stained and you see that the stain has dried. I'm going to take another sponge brush and I've chosen a beautiful green and let's say that I want to paint the floor of it. I can apply the paint directly on top of the stain. Now I usually sand after that stain dries before I apply the paint and just brush it on like this. Now, here is one that has been stained, painted, and as you can see, the paint has dried, and I have applied a coat of water-based varnish so that I can antique it. And I'm going to antique with the very same glaze. I could mix a different color, but it will be beautiful to use the burnt umber and asphaltum, and I'll just brush it over the painted, varnished surface. If you want it to be darker, add more color. If you want it to be lighter, of course, less. Then take your cheesecloth and begin to wipe off the desired amount. Antique made a means to age, and you can antique before you do your painting or after you do your decorative painting. Have a little piece of sponge, and if you want to get a sponged effect, you can do that as well. And here you see a finished, varnished plate. The next thing that I want to show you how to do with the glaze is to create a wonderful faux finish. And here I have stained with white, and then I have used burgundy on the band. Now, I'm simply going to take some more of the glaze. We'll put this on the palette, and I have a piece of plastic wrap. I'll dip it in the glaze and into a lighter color, and then just begin to blot or stamp the edges to create the wonderful finish that you see here. And I have a candle burning over here on the finished piece, which shows you how lovely this effect can be. One more piece that I want to show you is using the combs, a wonderful faux finish. Sand your wooden piece. I've painted it in off-white let it dry and given it a coat of varnish. And now 
I'll simply take more glaze and add more umber and sienna, but again, this could be any color that you want it to be. Brush it on, and I want it to be generous. Experiment with color combinations. There's so many different things that you can do. Now, this is a comb, and Plaid makes so many wonderful combing tools. Now, just watch as I pull through this wet glaze. I can come back across. I can do it in pieces and sections to create a finished effect. And you will see in the finished piece how we added a mirror, trimmed the edge in black, and varnished. A wonderful product, the Neutral Glaze. We can do fantastic things with it. Give it a try. Look at the beautiful shading on the ivy leaves on this stool. To do the shading and the highlighting, I want to teach you a skill called floating. Now, most of the time when people float, they float with an extender or water. Now, I'm going to double load my brush with some water and with some color. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but do you see how it runs? And many people have problem with the running. When I joined hands with Plaid, I had the pleasure of working with their wonderful chemists. And they came up with a product I want you to know about. Look here. It's a floating medium, but the consistency is very gel. Now, I usually don't just tip one end of the brush in because I don't think it's a very good technique. But to show you how easy this is, I am going to tip. Tip one side of the brush in and blend it on the palette. Then come over to the edge of the color and pick up the paint. And just blend and blend and blend for just a few seconds. Then turn the brush over and you won't get that running look, you get the beautiful shading from dark to medium to light because it's a gel. And it works, and it's easy, and you'll love it. Okay, now, I have here a piece of wood that we can pretend is the top of a stool. And I'm using our new glazing, our neutral glaze, and I have a little of the neutral glaze and a little of the wonderful new color called asphaltum. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this again to show you how easy it is to stain. And we'd stain this whole thing and then wipe off as much as we wanted to stain the top of our stool. Okay, now I have a very light stain on this and I've traced the ivy on tracing paper and you can see where I've put a little chalk on the lines on the back and then use your pencil or your stylus to go over the lines to transfer the design to the surface. The next thing we want to do is base coat. And you can see that I've base coated here. But I love to add just a little bit of the float gel to my brush and the paint before I base coat because the paint flows on so very nicely. Now I stained very lightly the surface with asphaltum, wiped it, then I rubbed it with a piece of brown paper bag with no printing on it to smooth the wood grain, transferred the design, and did the base coating. Now here's a leaf over here, and you can see that the base coating has dried. Again, watch how easy it is to float to shade. When you're going to do the floating, always remember to use as large a brush as possible. That's a very good tip. All right, one corner of the brush into the float medium, blend on the palette, then come over to the edge, find an edge where you can slide in, blend on the palette so that it goes from dark to medium to light, then just come in and float, and look how beautifully, beautifully that shades. the dried paint, and no running. I can't make this product run. That's how easy it is to use. Let's just stroke on a little bit of a vein, 
If you want to dark it, darken it, let it dry and go back over it again and you're going to find that it dries very fast because it doesn't contain any extender at all. If you want to highlight, you simply use the same technique, corner of the brush, pick up the color, blend on the palette, and then if you want to highlight an edge, simply float the highlight on the leaf. That's all there is to it. The same thing on the ribbon. I've base coated the ribbon, and to shade, I'll simply use the float medium, a little bit of the burgundy, blend on the palette, and just come in and float the shadow or the highlight wherever you see fit. I want to show you a finished one now that I have done on this basket. Remember the wonderful product, Neutral Glaze, I stained with it, now I'm going to antique with it. We'll just take some of the glaze and a little more of the asphaltum, it could be any color, and brush it on. Now, if I'm scaring you, I've got to tell you that I did varnish this with a coat or even two coats of the water-based varnish. And you want to put the glaze all over the surface. Then take your cheesecloth or soft rags and begin to wipe away as much as you want to to get a finished antique effect. You're going to love using these wonderful products. There are two skills that need to be learned in order to really start beautiful painting. One of the skills is what we're going to talk about now, and it's called brush strokes. Brush strokes can be done with both round and flat brushes. We're going to use a flat brush and I'm going to take a piece of tape and just put a flag on the handle of this brush because you don't twist or turn the brush. Many people think you do, but you don't. You press, lift, and drag. All right, I'm going to touch my water and blot on my soft absorbent rag, and now I'm coming to my wet palette. This wet palette is fabulous. You soak the sponge, bring the water all the way to the top, soak the paper for 24 hours before using it, wipe excess water off, and that acrylic paint's going to stay wet forever if you prepare that palette right. Now, I'll come over here, and I'm going to take the light green and stroke, stroke, stroke on both sides of the brush, pushing the paint clear through the hairs of the brush. Touch the water, blot on the soft absorbent rag. Be sure that it's a soft absorbent rag. Now, here are the brush strokes. Touch on flat edge, pressure on flat surface, Hold the pressure and pull. Stand the brush on the flat edge and slide. Let's make the roof of a house and touch, press, lift and drag to a point. Touch the water, blot, pick up more paint, reverse, touch, press, lift and drag to a point. The very beautiful and graceful S strokes, wonderful U strokes, right side up and upside down and the only time the flag waves is when I pivot it on the half circle stroke. I'll clean the paint out of my brush and watch double loading. This is a skill that's very, very important to learn. I mixed a little bit of the burgundy into the white to get this light pink and I'll take the lightest color first and then the dark. Walk the brush towards the color. Now, count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Turn the brush over to the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Come back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Turn the brush over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Do you see that hole in the middle? You don't want that. You don't have enough paint in the brush. It probably takes a hundred strokes. That's right, a hundred strokes to get the brush full of paint clear through from front to back when you double load. Now, let's take a look at the double loaded brush strokes. Touch, press, slide. Stand the brush on the flat edge and drag. Again, pick up more paint, fill that brush, and touch, press, lift, and drag touch, press, lift, and drag. I want you to be aware of the magnificent 
coverage I'm getting with these acrylics. And if you're looking carefully when I go to my palette, you will see that the paint is a very beautiful opaque pigment. This is the new Folk Art Artist pigment, and it's absolutely fabulous. Now I want to show you quickly how to create a little rosebud, and I'll do it using these U-strokes. Watch, I'll take just a dot of color and make an upside down U, and then connect with the right side up U, and there's the rosebud. Now, to paint these on a project, you want, of course, to sand your piece of wood first and then paint it, and I've used a wonderful folk art taffy color to base coat with. Trace your design onto tracing paper. You can use a graphite paper or chalk. I prefer the chalk method because it's hard sometimes to cover graphite lines, and you can see here how I've just applied colored chalk on the back and then gone over the lines to transfer the design. Now, these little leaves have been base coated with Hauser Green Light. Here's a little one up here that hasn't been done, and we'll just base coat it and let it dry. Now, you can see I've base coated my leaves. I've used my beautiful float gel to do the shading on the leaves. And now, let's double load the brush and blend on the palette to soften the color. We'll come right in here, put down a little dot of color, and then the upside down U around the dot of color. Pick up a little more paint. Now, it takes practice to learn to double load, and Plaid has published wonderful, wonderful, wonderful books that many fine teachers have written about decorative painting. In my books, you'll find the beautiful step-by-step paint-along worksheets and complete instructions and marvelous text. The thing I love to do more than anything, well, almost anything, is teach people how to paint. A little bit of background color can be applied also using this wonderful float medium. I'll just take a bigger brush and I'll pick up a little of the float medium and I'll come over here and just brush the medium on the finished dried section and then pick up a little of the Hauser Green Light or the Hauser Green Dark and just start to pat that color in and around. You can pick up a little bit of burgundy and do the same. But you want to work quickly because you don't want the float medium to dry and you can even take your finger and just soften it out with your finger a little bit of a sponge and it puts a wonderful, wonderful background behind the roses. I'll see you in just a few minutes and we'll do something wonderful. Another skill that has to be learned when we're painting is the skill of blending colors together. Now, with acrylics, they dry fast. This can be an, uh, an asset or when you're blending colors, it can be a liability. I'm so excited about our new blending gel medium. This is something that I knew could happen for acrylics, but it just hadn't. But now, Plaid and Folk Art have made it happen. And you're gonna have to try it to understand, but I want to show you how to use it. First of all, you've got to understand about your surface. And this is a piece of raw wood. And I like to sand the wood and then take my traced pattern and apply chalk to the back, and I would use colored chalk, of course, to be able to see the pattern transferred to this and transfer the design to the surface. All right, believe it or not, this is the same raw wood. Everybody always says, raw wood, Priscilla, raw wood, what are you talking about? Well, just watch and see and listen and understand how this works. I'm going to take some of this wonderful blending gel medium and put it onto my wet palette. Now, the wood is raw, it is unsealed, and because it's unsealed, when I put the gel onto it, the gel will soak in to the raw wood, but it won't run because it's a gel. Can you get too much? Yes, you can, and I got so excited to tell you about it, I almost put too much on it myself. Now, I'm going to do a leaf, and we'll just put a shadow down, and you'll find these leaves 
in the wonderful books that Plaid publishes for me. And I'm not really teaching you how to do this leaf. I'm teaching you how to use the blending gel medium. And this is called a basic brush stroke dry brush blend leaf. And I'm working with the Hauser Greens. But there's something else that I'm doing. I'm going to stop for just a minute because I want to call your attention to it. I want you to be aware of the paint I'm using. This is the Folk Art Artist's Pigment, and it isn't just any paint. Watch when I squeeze the paint onto my palette. Look at the consistency. It's a much thicker consistency. There's a tremendous amount of pigment that's absolutely fantastic. Now, you'll find that it covers very, very well. And I'm just blending in a little bit of the Hauser Green Dark. Now, I stopped to talk to you, but look how wet the paint's staying. And it's blending for me very, very much like oils would blend. And that's because my wood is wet, therefore my paint is staying wet, but also the quality of the paint I'm using is exceptional. Let's do a little bit on the front petal of this pansy. First, I'll pick up the gel and I'll wet the wood. Can you get too much? Yes, you can. But you don't usually have to worry about it bleeding because of the gelled consistency. I'll start with the white and I'll pull the white all the way out to the edge. Wipe my brush, pick up a little yellow ochre and just pat, 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 pat. And then pick up a little bit of the burgundy and dioxazine purple, beautiful color, and pat that in the center. Now watch me move that color out. And this is the raw wood technique. Now, the wood grain, or not the grain, but the nap of the wood, will lift a little bit when this dries, and you just take a piece of brown paper bag with no printing on it and rub and it smooths the wood surface. The next thing I need to talk to you about is blending on a sealed surface. Now this has been painted, base coated, uh, the little heart with a folk art color and I need to base coat. I didn't have to base coat on the raw wood but on the sealed surface I've got to put a base coat down and let the base coat dry before I can do the painting. Otherwise, as you can see, because the paint is a little transparent, the background would show through. Now, I went ahead and base coated the pansy petal, and that has dried, and I'll pick up the blending gel medium. Now, this time, it won't soak in because I'm on a surface which is sealed with the paint. Therefore, it's important to work a little bit faster. But the glory of the product is simply the fact that its combination of extenders are so spectacular that it really gives you a remarkable length of time to get the blending done. Now, remember that acrylics like to be cold. Hot dries them and they don't like any air blowing on them, that dries them as well. But look at the beautiful blending, the beautiful merging of the colors that I can get. And you'll be fascinated at how long the blending gel medium and the beautiful new artist's pigments stay wet, enabling you to play and blend and make acrylics work for you like they've never worked before. Come on, give it a try. You're going to love it. Painting on glass is lots of fun, and it can be very, very easy to do. Folk art has a wonderful glass medium, and I think you'll enjoy using it very, very much. We can paint on clear glass. We can paint on opaque glass, any glass surface you wish. And remember, there's many different ways that you can apply the paint to the glass, as you will find out when you do this for yourself. Now, the first thing we always want to do is clean the glass with alcohol. Clean it very well and let it dry. Next, you want to transfer your design, and you've got to find something that will easily transfer. This transfer paper 
is a chalk transfer paper, and when I put it down and scratch it with my nail, I think you can see that a white line has transferred off onto that. So we would trace our design and we would carefully transfer it to the surface. Now I've worked in stages here, let's move this out of the way a little bit, and I'm going to take the glass and tile medium and put a little of it on my palette or you could put it in a little bowl. Now take a small brush and very carefully and neatly undercoat with the glass and tile medium, the design. The key to this is to let it dry and cure, and cure means a long time. Something can be dry but not cured, and it might take 36, 48 hours depending upon the temperature, but let it cure. Once it's cured, when you're working on a transparent surface, then you want to neatly and carefully undercoat in white because you want to put that opaque white background behind and that's what I've done here and you want the white paint to cure now after it has cured let it dry a long time I'm mixing a little bit of white with cerulean blue and then very carefully come in and paint and if your color isn't dark enough let it dry and cure and then come back and apply a second coat I have applied several coats here to get it to be so beautifully dark and brilliant. Next, you want to do your little finishing touches, and I'm not going to take the time to do much painting on this, but you want to finish up your decorative painting, let it dry and cure, and then take your glass medium and come in and put a final coat on top so that you're actually sandwiching the painting between the, uh, uh, the glass medium. All right, let's put this aside and let's talk about the opaque glass. This time, I'll just have some fun and I'll take a little of the glass medium in the brush and a little dioxazine purple and let's just come see the white undercoatings done here for me. So I can just come around, I can transfer a design on or I can almost freehand it. You can personalize things. There's so many wonderful, wonderful fun things you can do. If we want to do a stripe, again, a little of the glass medium, and we'll come in and stripe. Now I need to talk about the preparation of this. This was wiped with alcohol, and then the glass medium, this time, was applied to the entire surface. I let it dry and cure, and then begin to do the additional decoration on the glass. Now, I didn't get very far with this, but you'll see the wonderful finished effect. Be sure when it's dry that you come back with the glass medium and sandwich it back or cover the whole thing. It will work either way. Have fun painting glass. Makes beautiful gifts makes beautiful home accessories. I know you're going to enjoy it.